serious problems. I'm not saying that at all. There are some who do. But the bottom line is, when you, when you look at the whole picture and you go up the ladder, okay, we are not the enemy. The enemy isn't human at all. But it's pushing all our buttons so that we're so busy looking at each other and so, so um, uh, neurotic about each other that we're not looking at the real, the real reality here, the real cause, which is another race or races that are here who are totally playing games with us, feeding off our energy, and hoping that we destroy ourselves so that they can keep the planet. And themselves. really, let's let's say who it is again. It's the Orion Group. It's the Orion Group. It's a group that is on its way here and now from Alpha Draconis. They're the real culprits behind this whole deal. Um, Alpha and, Draconis and or Orion or both those. Two? Alpha Draconis. They're the real culprits behind this whole thing. Above the Orion. Above the Orion Group. Yes. Okay. Yes. So then the there's hierarchy. Orion. Then there's Orion. The Orion Group. Then you've got uh, the Greys. And where did the, the Giza intelligence fit in here? Uh, they were just a, a group that were totally independent that came in and did their own thing. Uh, they were perceived as gods and they played the role out. And they got stuck in it. You know, they got stuck in the ego part of it. We're gods, we can do this, we have all this technology. And they just played it out for all that it was worth. Okay. Uh, you know, but to be honest with you, at this point, they're not really much of a factor anymore you know, Giza intelligence. They're not much of a factor at all anymore. What should a human being do if they encounter a renegade Zeta Reticulin? What would your advice be? Stand in their truth. If you can't run, stand in your truth and just look, them, look at them. If they try to project their head and their thoughts into your head, you just stand firm with who you are and you say, no, you are not coming into my head, you are not taking me over, and you are not not going to violate my free will. I don't give a damn who you are. Leave me alone. Period. Because if it's a benevolent, they will not try to do it. They will not try to take you over. They will not try to, to put crap into your head so they can feed off of your fear. Period. Alright. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to skip the Giza intelligence for the moment then, and we'll go to the Alpha Draconis. Can we, can we take a short time Oh, out? definitely. Thank you. You know, Rick, I, there, there's something else I want to I stress here. And that is, and this is something that, that the Andromedans have really stressed. There is no race any better than us. Just because they're different, just because they're more evolved, doesn't mean that they're better. We are equal. We're just not maybe as aware as they are. But that doesn't mean that any race is any better or any less. In fact, we're all equal. So we should just not worship anybody. Hell, no. Absolutely not. That's how we got into this mess in the first place. Right. Um, that, 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 absolutely, if you want to worship somebody, worship the God within you. That's it. Worship no one else. And if you're going to have a tyrant in your life, let it be that part of you that's critical of you. Let that be your only tyrant. Don't give anybody else any power outside of your physical form to be a tyrant, to control you, or manipulate you in any way. Be yourself. Because if you are yourself, you're a part of God, and that part of you knows what to do. It knows the right way to live. And, you know, and this is really interesting. Because of our genetic makeup, of the 22 different races, and, and all of the DNA and the racial memories that we have and the genetics that we have, because of the fact that we are spirit, do you know, and this is an incredible thing, do you know that the Andromedans actually consider us royalty? They consider us royalty. We obviously aren't acting like royalty, but we're the only ones in our galaxy that can make the claim to having the genetics that we have and the possibilities and the capabilities of doing what we can do as a race. We're the only ones. They actually consider every single one of us royalty. Now, think about that. I guess all beings that, that would try and... and uh be spiritual and raise their spirituality in, in essence would be royalty. Yeah. Uh, yes, I suppose that's true. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the the ringleaders then of this whole orchestration that's <laughs> going here on Earth. According to your Andromedan sources, there are okay, 22 races originally colonized the Earth, the first race being the reptilians from Alpha Draconis. What was the nature of their colony here? 
or they're Hyperborean. Basically, they're explorers. And uh, they're also genetic engineers. They would just colonize. They would take samples. They would hang a flag and say, this belongs to us, just like we did with the moon. You know, but except we, we weren't the first ones there. Um, they, exactly what, what, what we've done. They were explorers. And they would just go to a place. They would see what was there. They would explore it. If there were minerals that they needed, if there were other life forms, organisms, whatever it was that they needed, they took. And then when it was done, they had enough. They moved on and just kept exploring and expanding their their realm of, of exploration or territory. And you said they were dumped here. Originally, uh, right. originally they were. Right. They were dumped in Alpha Draconis. Nobody knows exactly where they came from. And my understanding is that even in their ancient history, they don't know exactly where they came from. Um, but they, they were left in Alpha Draconis because that particular system offered them the highest probability of survival. And from there, they were able to create craft, space travel. I mean, they're magnificent in what they did. And they're to be commended for what they did. But the fact that they need to control and dominate and manipulate to the degree, sorry, I have a problem with that. And so does half, half of the other of the, of the galaxy. Um, that's just the way they are. They're the biggest bully. Nobody can beat them up or wipe them out. So therefore, they have no motivation to change. So that's the space they hold. And... Uh, you know, the Andromedans actually consider them the ultimate warriors, which says a lot, you know, uh, for whatever reasons. A lot of uh, bullies end up destroying themselves. Well, that's, um, that's something that r may possibly need to happen, we hope soon, or I hope soon, you know, because we need to be free. We need, we need to have our shackles that we've been, been put, put around us let go of so that we can really evolve. And, you know, we have awesome potential. We really do. Uh, we have been, as a race, we have been through so much here. We have so much experiences, you know, and because of our emotions, which is really our strength, which really sets us apart from all the other races out there, even the other human races, you know, we have tremendous capabilities to, to create things. And, um, you know, but, but we, we need to get clear of what's real and what isn't. You know, we also need to get really clear about being able to create our own future, to create our own reality, and not have somebody say, well, that doesn't work for me, so you're going to have to do this. You know, uh, play God and ruler over us. Uh, you the sense know, of responsibility right. is so important it, in all of this. It's, it's, with any sense of power, with, with any knowledge, comes responsibility. That's exactly right. And the divine plan is one of freedom, free expression. Free expression, free expression, free expression. It is not one where they want to implant us and they say, you are going to be a worker, you're going to be this, you're going to be that. Sorry, that's not what it's all about. And if anybody tries to force that stuff down your throat, fight it. Okay, so the Andromedans tell you that the Alpha Draconians are here now. Where? There are 1,833 of them that have been living underground between 100 and 200 miles beneath the surface. They've been here, some of them have been here a, a long, long time. They have lifespans that, that are thousands of years. Uh, uh, they're carnivorous. They are not friendly to mankind, um, at least the ones that are here. Are you saying carnivorous, they eat humans? Yes. And they need to be, they won't eat a dead human. It has to be alive at the time of the killing. Their preference is children. You know, and we've been told, we've been told, you shouldn't talk about that. You know, there are, uh, other people say, well, you better not talk about the reptilians. Well, you know, uh, bull, you know, uh, why not? According to the Andromedans, uh, they're responsible for 31,712 children disappearing in the last 25 years from the United States. These children were food. And I'm supposed to just shut up and not say anything about it because people don't want to hear it? That's tough. That's tough. You know, Westchester County, in the last five years, 3,000 children in Westchester County, New York, have vanished without a trace. Where are they going? Why are we allowing this to happen? How and why should people want to stay in denial about now it? Now, how are they able to do this? How are, they able to, how, are they able to, how are they able to do it? How are they able to come up out of this from underground and do it? Or do they have There are tunneling systems working? everywhere. They're being helped by the greys. And also, there are groups within the higher echelon that are actually helping them.